Nick, uh, when, when you bring in guys in the middle of the year or like into training camp, uh, guys who weren't here initially, um, I mean, we know the football process about getting them extra work, but what about like the acclimating them into the culture and, and the building and the, and the team? Like, how does that process work for you guys? Yeah, you know, first and foremost, you have to get them to learn the system and, and so they're ready to play. Um, but it, it really works by, by the people that we have in this building, right? They, they, they reach out, you know, our players um, just getting excited about the, the new faces in here, talking to them. Um, and that's the beginning part of it because it's all about connecting. You know, I try to do my, my, my part of it too by getting to know the guy a little bit as much as we can until we, you know, but it, it is, it's a process to, it, again, it's the, it's the guys that we have in here, but then as we continue on, it's a process, right? And it's just being intentional about our core values, uh, you know, of mainly connecting and, um, you know, they just kind of see how the things are working in here and, and it's, it's really up to our leaders and we, that's why we got really good leaders to, to bring these guys in. So what are your first impressions of Kevin and what do you think he adds to your team? Yeah, um, again, I've had a lot of uh, just watching him as a player, um, being on the other sideline of him um, when he was in Tennessee and, and I was in Indy. So obviously as a player, um, I have a lot of respect there. And then also know the, the people, I know some people in the building at, at Tennessee and, and they can't say more good things about him. Um, very high praise as a player, very high praise as a person, very high play, praise as a, as a leader. And so we know we're, we're not only getting a good person, we're getting a good, pardon me, a good player, but also a good person. And, and that's exciting because, um, you know, when you get the right people in here, that they're going to be able to handle the ups and downs of the season. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, we'll be out in the field today, so we'll be able to, you know, uh, obviously with walkthrough, but hear him communicate and all those different things today and see how he's picking up the, the defense. Experience, you know, that he's had over the years and everything. Do you expect him to be able to make that transition much smoother than let's say? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. And he's played in different different systems and, and different uh, ways of doing things. So, yeah, I think, you know, again, everything we know about uh, Kevin is, you know, obviously besides the playing stuff, it's, it's about, you know, how big of a student of the game he is also and then just the, the type of leader and type of person he is. Everyone's healthy. You're going to have a, a, a ton of experience in that secondary. What does that What does that give you beyond the talent? Yeah. Um, obviously, you know the different. You know the more experience you have, uh, you've seen different things, and that and that's huge. Like the different route combinations, the different players in the league. You know those these guys. You know keep a lot of tabs on the players that they play against, uh, and and the the coordinators they play against. So that's huge in the recognition. You know. You know, defense players, they get paid to stop plays, right, and, and to stop players. And so, you know, those two things, he's had, he's had a lot of experience with both. So, uh, and, and our defense is going to have had a lot of experience with both. So that experience is really good, but you also have the mix of some young guys that are that are out there playing, going around there and playing. Um, you know, I thought, you know, Eli did a really nice job and, um, you know, Sydney did a nice job. And so, you know, we're going to – it's a good mixture, just kind of like what we have on the, the defensive line, right, a mixture of the young the young guys and the guys that have been around here for a little bit, and, and that's proved to be good. And so we know that will prove to be good in the secondary as well. What's Jalen's status? And, and, and I guess what sense do you have of how he's going to have to manage this going forward? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll let you – you guys ask him about how, how he's feeling. Um you know, we've, we we're we're confident that that he'll be ready to go. But it's you know, anytime he's he's anytime these guys are working through uh, pain and, and things like that. I mean, they gotta, you know, we we anticipate them to go, but like uh, it's, that doesn't mean it's easy, right? And so, um, you know, works we're, we're you know, again, we'll see as we're not going to be out in the field running around today. Um, so I still need a little bit more time to, but I think he's feeling better. But I'll let you you guys ask him that. And so we're hopeful that, that he'll be no uh, limitations on, on Sunday. Nick, you had mentioned after the game Sunday night about, <clears throat> pardon me, the tush push being creating a first and nine kind of mentality. How far do you kind of push that in terms of the options that you have when you're calling plays? Like, you know, when you guys are sitting around thinking about, okay, we know we can do this at any time. We can mm -hmm. get this yard pretty much any time we want it. How far then do you and your coaches and, and maybe people in the front office think about what else can we do with this? How far can we push our play calling and things we do because we have this play? You know, one thing that 
that um, happens a lot in this play is like it, it's not easy to get to third and one, but we're there quite. You know, I think there's a lot of attention that when we get on third and one or fourth and one or two or whatever it is, we're we're running this play at times, right? And so there becomes a lot of attention on it because of the amount of times we've done it. Um, but to get to third and one or fourth and one, that's not easy in itself. And and our guys have done a really nice job of when we do run this, it's because they put themselves in position on first and second down and, and third down sometimes um, to get to that spot. And so, um, you know, I think it's just that that the success that we're having on, on first and second down is putting us into the spot. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm answering your question. You know, it, let's say it's late in the game, okay? You're trying to wrap the clock, second and one. I'm just spitballing here. Would you take a knee to run more time off? Because you knew at third and one or fourth and one, you can run this play. No, no, I don't think, I don't think I'd ever put myself in a position to take a knee to do that. Again, it's not – it's not – you get maybe you get different defenses on second and one than you get on third and one and fourth and one. Like, um, I don't think I'd ever do that, um, you know, because, uh, yeah, I just – that's my initial – you asked that question. That's my initial thought, I guess, uh, on that one. But um, we're confident in the play, as you know, and we're confident that we can – you know, I, I think the next question you'd probably would ask is like, well, why wouldn't you take a shot on third and one? Maybe I didn't know if you were going there. Um, because, again, it's not like, again, we're, we trust it and we believe in it, but it's not in like this automatic thing. I, I sometimes, some points, you know, I'm going to stop answering how I'm answering right now because I feel like I'm giving too much information. Um, but we are confident in the play and uh, – I, I showed a clip today of just the the belief our guys had in it. You know, there's a in the TV copy. Um, you know, when I called the timeout and told the offense they're going back in the field, there's a picture of Slay kind of going out in the field, and then he goes walks right back and goes and sits down on the bench. You know, he had confidence in it enough to go sit on the bench and know that he's not going back in the game in that particular one. So, um, yeah, the whole organization has has confidence in this play. Improvement in the run defense was that something at the end of last year that you felt needed to be addressed this year? Um, yeah, I mean you're always looking at where you are, and and when you do any sort of self scout, you're looking at where you fall in line and with the rest of the league and what what you can do to improve it um, and different things like that. Um, and so we were, I, I don't remember exactly, but I know we were we were were we like 15, 16, somewhere in there. We're 20s. I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, and so and so you you look at those things and you and you always want to improve on the things that you feel like you can that you can do better, um, you know. And so you know at, at this point at this stage in the game we're thinking to ourselves, well, we're like 18th in turnover differential. Obviously, we're, no one's satisfied with that. We want to work at that. Well, it's the same thing with your run defense. It's the same thing with your red zone offense. It's the same thing with your. You're, if if you're not up to par of where you think you should be, um, and you look at it and you and you try to paint the picture of why of why you're not where you're supposed to be, and so yeah, that's that's any but that and but also with this new you know with the new I want to say system, but you know with Sean coming in here, there's more there's a lot of time spent in that off season about implementing the the your scheme and all those different things while still looking at the things that you weren't successful on uh even in the year before and so uh, anytime like that you're always thinking about that and the emphasis of of improving things that are, appear to be your weakness Jalen and how he's feeling and we'll talk to him a little bit later but curious we don't get to see marcus that much uh, now that you've been with him for a while what how do you feel uh, what has he shown uh marcus yeah, yeah uh you know he's he's great in the in the room. Um, he's got an ability to really be explosive. I think he's a weapon with the with the ball in his hands, um, and we like the way he goes through progressions and and throws the football. Um, and so he's played a lot of football games, um, and we know, we have the utmost confidence in him that if he had to step into play, he'd be ready to go because he's a pro. He's been in the system uh, for some time now, and you know. Um, and we we have confidence that he would be able to make plays because he's a playmaker. 
Yeah, statistically, defenses are playing more zone defense, or zone coverage around around the league. Have you noticed that in doing that against you guys, and why do you think that is? Whether it's against you or just in general. You know, you you go into each. I I don't look at it like this, right? I'm looking at it from this opponent, and so you you notice going into games what they're playing, right? And so I guess to say, yeah, I notice that they're playing a lot of zone. I I'm so locked in and focused on the team that we're playing that I don't see the big like. I don't see the big picture like that in this sense, right? I see the big picture of the Washington Commanders, um, but maybe not of the entire league. And so, um, yeah, I mean, as the teams that we've played, we've played some different unique defenses um, where, you know, sometimes that's a match type zone and sometimes that's a zone drop type zone. And, um, you know, all zones aren't completely equal, as you know, right? Uh, you got middle open, two high zones. Full, uh, you have middle uh, one high zones where it's match, one high zones where it's uh, not match. And so, I mean, there are more zone coverages than man coverages, obviously, right? And so, yeah, I, I guess I, I, yeah, I guess long story short, I don't, I don't see it that way because I'm so locked into the, the team that we're going to play, and this team does a good job of, of mixing coverages, um, both man and zone. We'll do two more, please. When, when, you, when, you, saw, when you brought in, you know, guys like, Leo Jones and and also Bayer. Um, like, did you see last year how much like an effect like having those veteran guys like Sue and Joseph helped out guys like Jordan Davis and the Kobe Dean, and and was that part of the you know process as far as bringing these guys in this year to help? Yeah, guys? you think about you try to think about every scenario, and that's definitely the the benefit of being around an experienced veteran that's had a lot of success is that you're. You know, maybe your your younger guys don't play as much, but they also but they learn from them, right? And and you know, I think we saw we we've seen with you know, Nicobe's had a good start to the season. You know, obviously, been injured, but he's had he's had some nice games uh, that he's that he's played in. Cam Jurgens, the games he's played in, he's had some nice games. Uh, Jordan wasn't thr- Jordan Davis wasn't thrusted into the the scene last year as as much because he had some guys that he was pl- sharing time with. And you see that all these guys that that learn from these guys, and and I don't want to say that always that sitting out a year is a good thing, but in some cases it is, in some cases it's not. And but it, what's important is that they're learning from you know the right type of guys, and we just feel like that's the type of guys we have here. Um, you see it with our offense and defensive line, with you know all the time with the development of those guys. So it's the same thing there with the secondary. And uh, again, you know Kevin's going to be. Um, doing all everything that he needs to do to to get acclimated to being ready to play, to knowing his players. But sometimes you can learn from guys. A lot of times you can learn from guys if you're being observant uh, without even talking to that guy. Uh, you know what I mean? Because of the way they go about their business, the way they play the game. Last one. From a, a, a size and skill perspective, he's different than OG and Clay. How does that affect the way he views the other receivers on the field? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Um, Again, you you try to you try to do the things that your guys do well and put them in positions to to succeed to do well. Um, and so, you know that that's learning that through you know with with Julio, we know that he's been successful in this league for a, for a long time. So we know he does a lot of things well. But it's also learning exactly what he does well and and being able to put him in on that. And same thing with Oz and same thing with Quez and same thing with Devonte and AJ and Dallas. You're trying to put them in in positions to succeed while also not tipping your hat that, hey, every time he's here, we're doing this, or every time he's there, we're doing that. Um, and so, um, but definitely when you're, when you're, when you have a, a receiver core, you don't want everyone to have the same skill set, right? You want, it's almost like a, you don't, like a basketball team, you don't want five point guards, you don't want five centers, you, you don't want, uh, five power forwards. You want guys to be able to do different things to, so you can attack the field different ways, right? And so we feel like we have. We feel like this is a well-rounded room where we where we have that. You got, you know, and so and Julio only adds to that. And so we're excited about the room we have um, uh, moving forward, and and we'll continue to see how the the roles um, kind of define themselves.